I'm Nathan Ponchard, this is Chasing Cars, and this is the reimagined 2021 Lexus IS. The reason why it's reimagined is that it is essentially a new generation of the car, but it is actually heavily based on the old car. However, even though that sounds like a criticism, I think that this car does an exceptional job of taking something and making it better, certainly visually anyway. It has changed pretty much everywhere. The whole entire front end, the, all the panels down the side, the tracks, you name it. The only things that it carries over from before is the glass, the front of the roof line, but not the back of the roof line, and the wheelbase, which is not that much. Starting from the front here, the aim and the theme of the car has been lower and wider, and that's both visually and in terms of engineering. Now here in this IS350 F Sport version, we have Lexus's spindle grille, which is lower and guess what, wider at the bottom. Lexus says the headlights are 43 millimeters lower than they were before, and they have those very angular arrowhead shaped LED lights, and the bonnet here tapers a lot more tightly in at the front here. So when you're looking at this car in a rear view mirror, or front on anywhere, it has a very coupe-like look to it. It really does look quite tough. Now, the front and rear tracks of the car are much wider. The body's only grown by 30 millimeters, but the front track is 45 millimeters wide and the back is 50 millimeters wider. So it has this stance. Not only do you feel that when you drive it, but you can see that visually. And it really takes what was sort of almost an effete kind of looking older generation IS, albeit pretty, to something that has a lot more muscularity about it. Now, walking down the side here, even the sills, the way the sill comes along here and then starts to bulge into these back wheel arches here. This section of the sill here at this angle matches the angle at the back of the door here, which is meant to highlight the fact that the roof line is faster. The back of the roof here is 15 millimeters lower than before and the boot lid's 31 millimeters lower, but taken quite a long way further back. So there's more rake in the rear screen. It's essentially pulling the car back and lowering it down, which really does make it look good. The F-Sport versions also have 30 millimeters more in rear tire width. So we now have 265 19s back here instead of the 235s that were before. And the base car has 18s instead of 17s. There's also been quite a lot of lightning in the suspension. Uh, the coil springs front and back are 20% lighter than before. And there's been a lot of change from steel to aluminium in various sections, which has lowered the weight of say, the rear stabilizer bar up to 20%. I suppose it all adds up to the fact that this car in V6 form is up to 30 kilos lighter than before and up to 20 kilos lighter in the turbo petrol. Coming around the back here, you can see again what Lexus's designers were aiming for, and that is low and wide. You have these rear wheel arches sticking out, well, the haunches quite broadly on the car, and a lot of tapering in this section here to come into this upper boot lid section with a spoiler in the F Sport. So when you're driving from behind, it really does look like you're following a coupe. It could be the new generation RC, for example, not a Lexus IS. And so it gives the car, which was never a really wide, big car in the first place, this extra bit of muscularity and presence that it didn't have before. I absolutely love this sort of red key line effect light, like in the UX, but better, where it goes along here. This is for the brake light section, but it all lights up when the lights are on, and it gives the car a stance and exacerbates that width about the car. And down the bottom here, where this is the V6, it has two pipes, although I think pretty much all of them do. And once you get inside here, it's the same as before. So we have a 480 litre boot here, 450 in the hybrid, Nothing particularly special about it. Doesn't really have anything fancy. It has a space saver under the floor. It has quite intrusive C hinges here and no automatic activation, but whatever, 480 is pretty good. And it has a 60-40 split backrest. So while this isn't trying to be a spacious family sedan, it still ticks the boxes to an extent. Being not an all new car, but a heavily revised one, the Lexus IS is quite familiar inside. And that's no bad thing because the third generation IS has always been pretty nice inside. Some of the plastics, like along the glove box here and on the tops of the door here, and maybe even the edge of the dashboard here, 
aren't really as cohesive as what we've led to expect in this class. It's certainly not to an Audi A4 level, but in terms of the general fit of everything here and the way everything works, it's actually really good. The changes are not great, They, in terms of being not many of them, and they start with these eyeball vents on the outside here, which are really cool, I love eyeball vents. The door trims are completely new, apparently, as is the seat bolstering and the seats, uh, but it doesn't really feel that much different. You can still only just get a barely a one litre bottle in the door, which is not much, and um, you know there isn't proper grab handles on the door, but generally it's pretty good. This model here is an F-Sport, which means that it has these uh, perforated leather seats as standard with fan cooling as well. But if you buy the absolute base model, it doesn't have leather at all. It has vinyl and no cooling, which, as we'll discover when we drive it, is not great. Um, this car also has the Mark Levinson stereo, which has been upgraded to 17 speakers and 1800 watts. I would imagine that if I was buying a Lexus IS, I wouldn't want the 10 speaker Pioneer one, even though it's fine, I'd want this thing. But I suppose most importantly for that is that this is a Toyota Motor Corporation car that no longer has the same crapo screen that it used to have. It now has a touch screen, which means you don't need to use this slightly infuriating trackpad that's down here. You can now use a combination of both until you're driving, in which case this is completely blocked out and you need to use this. Um, at least I think it is. And even if it isn't, when you go through it, most of the stuff is ghosted anyway, so you can't do anything with it. The driving position, as per before, is nice and low. You really sit low in this car with this quite fat and not so attractive wheel in front of you, which carries over from before. And there's a really good view out of the IS as well. The cowl's quite low. It does seem quite narrow because the pillars do come in quite narrow in here, but I kind of like the way that makes you feel compact in the car. We also get padded sections here next to the side of the center console, which is important because it isn't a very wide car inside. But I suppose most importantly, it's unlikely that anything is gonna break in here. And that's why people buy Japanese, isn't it? I think the best surprise and delight thing though, and something that continues to work for the car, are these ventilation sliders, the temperature control, which were quite novel in 2014 when this interior first appeared and have since appeared on a lot of cars, including plenty of Audis. And yeah, while they do make beeps while you move them, they are still really quite tactile. Everything is laid out in a very simple, easily numbered, easily scripted fashion, so it would be very difficult to work out what not to do in an IS. Sitting in the back of the 2021 IS is kind of the same as the 2014, because unlike the front, it's mostly exactly the same. The seat has been rebolstered slightly, so you do sit quite deep in it. You have the seat is quite good for under thigh support. It has been rebolstered, although there really isn't very much toe room. I could do an ab workout here, sitting behind where I was sitting in the front. Um, the leg room is okay. The headroom is marginal with the moonroof in this car. I don't know whether it gets more when it doesn't have one. Um, but, you know, it's not about having a family car here. The IS is a sports sedan that just happens to seat two more people. It probably doesn't seat three more people unless you're very small because this seat is hard and risen and has an extremely high center tunnel here, which is that far below the seat. We do have a pair of air vents, although you can't adjust the temperature, and the doors have kind of nothing. They have a padded armrest, but they don't have anything to grab onto. They have nowhere to put drinks, and they have no map pocket, just this grab handle, which is nicely rubberized to hold onto, though, up here. You do have a good view ahead. I'm looking around the headrest in front of me, uh, but that said, I suppose it is still a little bit tight, certainly not as big as the best cars are in its class. If you do want somewhere to put drinks, you can open this thing, which has flaps here, and the leather on this car is lovely. Um, has a little strap here to help you pull it down. The back seat's perforated, but it doesn't have cooling, doesn't have heating either, but I suppose on the whole, it's better than expected, but some way below the best in its class. Unlike the suspension in the new IS, which has been considerably reworked, the drivetrains are carryover. The 2.5 litre petrol electric hybrid still has 164 kilowatts tied to a CVT transmission, and the 2 litre turbo petrol that we're in now in the IS300 Luxury 
which is the new base car, still has 180 kilowatts and 350 newton meters, and the three and a half litre V6 in the IS350 still has 232 kilowatts and 380 newton meters. The thing that has changed with the two petrol engines is the logic and the intuition of the eight-speed automatic transmission. Now, Lexus says that it's G space A-I, which obviously means artificial intelligence. Put it in sport mode and it reads your driving style like a dynamic shift program rather than just instantly spiking to max attack like it did before in the old Sport Plus. Uh, this IS300, however, is not a F Sport, so it doesn't have adaptive dampers and it doesn't have a Sport Plus mode. The little dial here simply changes it between normal and sport, and it's the sport mode that gives it that extra intuition. In normal, like most other automatics these days, it just wants to grab as high a ratio as possible, and in a car as talky as this, that's fine. In the IS350, in the V6, it might seem talky on paper, but when you start to pick through the details, you realize that I think the IS300, which confusingly is a two liter, is actually the more drivable of the two. This one, like I said, has 350 newton meters, but it's from 1650 RPM to 4400, at which point the V6 still hasn't reached its peak of 380, which is from 4800 to 4900, like it's, like a peak, an actual point, whereas this car's torque curve is a complete plateau. And you can feel that in the way the cars drive. At times, I would dare say that the IS300 is quicker than the IS350 when it's using torque, and it's only when the V6 is revving out close to or approaching 7,000 RPM, whereas this is pretty much done and dusted by about 6.2, that it gives it a significant advantage over the four cylinder. I think that the turbo petrol in this size 300 is actually quite sweet as it has always been and the V6 has been given a bit more beef by having a sound symposer plumbed from the intake to the firewall to give more of an engine note in the cabin and you can hear that and in an era where we've had so many engines ruined or theoretically improved by having a synthetic overlay it's nice to have something that's actual hardware. Speaking of hardware, those suspension changes that I've already talked about have made a significant difference to the way the IS drives. It does feel lower and broader and more planted on the road. It has this lovely seamless flow to it, particularly this base IS300 luxury on 18 inch wheels with 235 tires. It used to have 17s but it now has 18s and it looks a little bit less dorky because of that. And I think that this is probably the sweetest driving package. The other car that I've driven so far, an IS350 F Sport, which has adaptive dampers, which this car does not have, is again fluent and planted and poised and really quite nice to drive. But I think that the four cylinder hits home quicker in how sweet and crisp it is to drive. It takes a little bit more time to warm to, I think, maybe the larger wheeled F Sport and the V6 engine in itself. Um, the steering in the V6, it does have a slight difference between Sport and Sport Plus because when you choose Sport Plus in the adaptive damping, it actually adds adaptive damping. The normal Sport mode keeps the normal dampers and has the Sport calibration for the transmission. And you can customise that, but you can't separate the steering from the damping. So whatever, and in the end, even in normal mode, the IS is actually a fluent and nice car to drive. You can hear quite a bit of tyre noise right now, which you might be able to hear, but I suppose this is a 2014 car that's had extra things done to it rather than a holistic new design. But I don't think ultimately that really detracts from the IS. Uh, it was always a likeable car, perhaps a little bit small, a little bit narrow, and yet now that it has this big wide track stance and this muscularity to it, certainly from looking at it from front on and back on, because in the rearview mirror it looks like I'm looking at a coupe right now, um, it adds an extra dimension to this car beyond what it had before. And it does make me think that now that it has the platform and the stance, why doesn't it have more of an engine than the V6? Surely the ISF is going to make a return, and if it has been telegraphed somewhere that it is making a return, then great, because I haven't read about it. But I 
praise it wholeheartedly. The brakes in the IS feel a little bit spongy in the V6. There's quite a bit of travel in them, although ultimately they do have the stopping power. Um, you can't really tell much of a difference between the weight of the four cylinder and the V6, although this four pot does feel a little bit lighter in the front and a bit sweeter. But it's not a lead tipped arrow by any stretch of the means, this IS, certainly not like a Camry V6 is, even with the new platform in that car. And while there has been quite a lot of extras added to the vehicle, certainly in terms of the equipment, it's gone up quite a lot given that it's only $1,000 dearer than before. This one starts at $61,500, which is pretty affordable. It still has vinyl seats. And I know they're called synthetic leather, but they're not. They're vinyl. And given that Lexus is so good at fan cooling seats and doing lovely leather and perforations and all that sort of stuff, here we're left with flat leather. Guaranteed I'll have a sweaty workers crack when I get out of the car, even though the aircon is cranking and crisp. And it kind of forces your hand in a way to go above and beyond what the IS300 Luxury has and add the EP2 pack, which is, I think is the one with the extra leather, to mean that you don't have a sweaty ass. And that's a bit sad. Lexus also claims that the new IS offers more safety features than any other model in its range, even though we're essentially in a refreshed 2014 generation car. And among those five things, which I may not be able to remember right now, is uh, turn assist, where if you're avoiding an obstacle and you've already started adding steering and it can see what's coming, it'll actually add a bit extra to help you get around it. If you're turning across traffic and someone's coming onto you and the car senses you're about to have a head on, it will slam on the picks and stop the in imminent situation for you. It also has all speed adaptive cruise control, all speed, which is pretty good. And uh, Lexus claims that it is really proficient at using lane keep assist. It also has lane change assist and all that stuff is becoming commonplace these days. But Lexus claims that they have worked a lot on the smoothness of these systems in this car. And I think in a way for a refresh of an already, you know, not class leading car, they've done a pretty good job of making the new IS something that is actually really quite good. It has a really great stance on the road and it is really fun even though the Japanese electronics won't let you have as much fun as you'd like at times. I'm sure we can turn ESC off here but we would get in trouble. It's nice to know that Lexus and its Toyota parent obviously are finally making cars that are so much better as driver's cars than they were before although it has to be said the IS has never really suffered from that and that's why I think that this reimagining of this vehicle is such a positive step forward for this car. So it could be said that the IS probably needed the least amount of work in Lexus's range to make it more of a driver's car and yet they've done it and it has made it really good. It is an old car, it's not a roomy car but it is a persuasive car and I suppose until December 31 at the moment which is the first what, you've got another month's worth of sales from where we are right now? You get Lexus Encore Platinum complimentary, which means you get, you know, holiday cars in certain places and airports and bits and pieces. You can have an LC convertible for the weekend if you wanted to and trade in your IS300. You could look at the new generation IS in two ways. You could look at it pragmatically and say, well, the premium sedan market isn't selling like it used to, and Lexus's SUVs are selling their tits off, so why invest all this money in a sedan that was already pretty good, and blah, 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 and you'd be correct. But you would also be right in understanding that the deputy chief designer of this car for the 2014 model year is now the chief designer for 2021, and what he saw in it was opportunity. And I think that his intimate knowledge of a car like this has actually made something better out of an existing product. When you think about it, other than the repaneling and the tracks and a bunch of other detail stuff, it's the same car, but it does feel like a lot better car. It's smoother, it's more fluent, it looks much more muscular. It's easily the best looking Lexus sedan potentially they've ever done. And that's something that people will find tangible because they want their car to look good. I suppose at base level, some of the equipment, while it is generous, is perhaps 
not as obviously luxurious as these cars with full leather interior. You really have to have the equipment pack to, to make that car something that fits the luxuriousness of what this car is capable of. And at the end of the day, it's not an Audi A4 and it's not a BMW 3 Series. It is not as slick as those two cars and it is not as slick inside as the Audi is, but it's still a really nice Lexus. And it has something about its driving persona that makes you kind of hope that they do an ISF because now it has the track width to be able to pull that off. If you haven't subscribed, please do so below the video, hit the notification bell and leave a comment on the 2021 Lexus IS or on chasing cars. Thanks for watching.